looking at verse number 1. When you find a place, we'll stand to your feet to show honor and respect to the Word of God here this morning. Mark chapter number 5, and we'll start reading at verse number 1. Amen. How many of y'all glad to be in the house of God here this morning? Amen. Amen. I don't know. I feel like some of y'all, I feel like some of you still sleep. Amen. We haven't, you know what? We haven't done this in a long time. We haven't done this in a long time. I guess it's, it's a good morning for it. Amen. All right. Can everybody see me up here? All right. You can't? So maybe bring the deck to you. can't see me here on the front row. You need to go get your glasses for you. Right. Oh, no. I'm short. Don't move. All right. All right, so when I touch my nose, I want to hear you say amen. 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 When I touch my chin, you say hallelujah. hallelujah. And when I touch my ear, you say glory to God. Glory to God. So amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. All right? Now, I want to make sure that everybody's awake this morning. Because I'm going to tell you, there's nothing more that a, that a preacher hates than to get up and preach his heart out and be soaking wet when he gets through preaching. And everybody's sitting there like this. And your eyes roll in opposite direction. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Alright, y'all ready? Amen. 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 I didn't touch my nose. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now don't just say it. I want you to shout it like you're praising the Lord. Alright. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. into the country of the Gadareans. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much, that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was, was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus came, uh, gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and into the uh, excuse me, uh, entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And they were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city. And in the country, they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and, and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had, uh, had done for him, and all men did marvel. Amen. I'm going to preach a message here this morning, the title of it, The Maniac of Gadara. Okay, the Maniac of Gadara. Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, God, again, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us uh, to be able to meet here once again. Thank you, Lord, for our children's church and how you're, how it's growing, Lord, and how you're blessing it and how the children are, are growing in the Lord. God, I thank you for that. 
Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing here at Glory Bound Baptist Church and what you're doing with us and through us, God. I pray that you just continue to use us for your glory. Lord, I pray that you help me now, Lord, as I preach your word. Lord, I pray that you give me strength and power and wisdom. God, I pray that you give me the words to say, Lord, and I pray that this message will be an encouragement to us. And through this, we'll draw closer to you and be able to better serve you. God, use us, Lord, here today, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Everybody can be seated. All right, what I want to do here this morning uh, is I, I really like doing verse-by-verse -verse studies, and uh, we do that on Wednesday nights. By the way, if you don't come on Wednesday night, I'd like to encourage you to come because uh, we get into some, uh, some uh, interesting stuff sometimes. Uh, this past Wednesday night was very interesting, and uh, my face turned about five shades of red, and, uh, and my ears turned red, and... Uh, and, then I, and then there was a lot of comments from the peanut gallery. Anyway, um, but I like doing the verse-by-verse -verse studies, and I think that's the best way to better understand God's Word, is to go verse-by-verse. -verse. A lot of times, a lot of times, we'll take and we'll read over something, and we'll just pick out a few little things, and we miss the big picture. And when you take things and go verse-by-verse, -verse, and even sometimes word-by-word, -word, you kind of get a better understanding, and you, you grasp a hold of some things that's really good and really helpful that you otherwise would have missed over if you just kind of just pick and choose. So I'm going to go through these verses here this morning, and I'm sure that maybe as we do this, maybe there will be some things brought to your attention that I miss. And that's the great thing about the Word of God. It's the living Word of God. Amen? Amen. It speaks to us, each and every one of us. So Mark chapter number 5, and let's start at verse number 1. Verse number 1 says, And they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadareans. All right, so... In Mark chapter number 4, and I preached a little bit from Mark chapter 4 last week, uh, there were some very wonderful things that was taking place. You see in the early chapters of Mark, we see where uh, there was a lot of people as Jesus came in uh, to the area there, uh, there was a lot of people that were healed and seen miracles uh, of Jesus, and then Jesus departs, and then He comes back, and when He comes back, we see that the, the church house was filled up, and we see that there was people trying to get in, and they were thrown by the crowd. Uh, it was just the, the, the house that Jesus was in. I preached a message, I think, two weeks ago. It was noise that He was in the house. And the church house was packed out, and they said the porch was packed out, and they brought in a, a man that was sick of the palsy, and they couldn't get him in, and they had to tear a hole in the roof uh, to lower him in. Amen? So there were some great things that was taking place. And when you see God moving, and you see God blessing in a mighty way, why would you want to cross over to the other side? Amen? Amen? Why would you want to cross over to the other side? I don't know about you. I enjoy the blessings of God. Amen? Amen. I like it when God's blessing. I don't like it. I don't like going through struggles. And I don't like going through hard times. But yet sometimes those things are necessary for us to be able to draw closer to the Lord and grow stronger in faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. But here we see that God was moving and God was blessing. But then we see where Jesus decides to cross over to the other side. And they can look at verse 1 again. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadareans. Now I could preach a whole message right here on this one verse. Why did Jesus choose to go over unto the other side? I mean, he was God was moving and God was blessing before He crossed over to the other side. Why would Jesus choose in the midst of the blessings, in the midst of everything that was taking place, why would He choose to go over onto the other side? You see what we talked about last week. When He chose to go over onto the other side, guess what happened? There on, on the sea. That was a great storm, right? right. So they all immediately, when they left the blessings, immediately they started going through trials and going through a storm. Amen? But there was a purpose in behind it. Jesus chose for a reason why to go over to the other side. Why did Jesus choose to go over to the other side? Well, there was a unique person that was on the other side. There was somebody on the other side that wasn't like anybody else that was on the other side of the sea. Everybody with me here? There was a unique person there that needed Jesus Christ. Let me say this. I'm glad that Jesus Christ left the 99 and came after the 1. Amen? I'm glad that Jesus came to where I was. He left some place and He came to me. Amen? And I thank Him for that. I thank God that Jesus Christ come down from heaven and He was born of a virgin named Mary and walked this earth for 33 and a half years and he who knew no sin became sin for us. Amen. I'm glad that he left all the splendor of heaven to come down here and live as a man and take my sin and your sin upon him and willingly lay down his life for us so that we can be yes. saved. Amen. 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 
Why did she, why, why did Jesus choose? Why did Jesus? Why did Jesus choose to go over to the other side? There was a unique person there that needed him. Not only that, God had a purpose. You know what? I don't. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter how God's moving and blessing here. If God tells you to move and go somewhere else, you go where God Amen. tells you to go. Amen? Amen. You go the way God leads. Amen? You know why? Because that's the easiest path that there is. If you try to go against God, you will have heartache. You will have struggles. You will go through the storm and stay in the storm and be lost at sea. Everybody with me here? Amen. But when God tells you to move, you trust Him, you follow Him, and you know what? God will clear the way because there's a purpose in behind it. Amen? That's right. Why did Jesus choose to go over to the other side? There was a unique person there that needed Him. God had a purpose there. When God has a purpose, God has a plan. Amen? Amen. There was a plan that was in place there. There was a unique person on the other side that needed God and God had a plan. And you'll see in these 20 verses here the plan unfold. Let me say this. God has a plan for you. Amen. God has a plan for your life. Each individual that's in here this morning, you're not just somebody that's supposed to come in here and take up a spot on a pew or on a chair. Amen? Amen. Amen. A lot of Christian people, they think once they get saved, they're doing their Christian duty by coming and sitting on a church pew or sitting on a chair in the church. Amen? There's more to the Christian life than that. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that we were created for His good pleasure. Amen? Amen. Right. Amen? That means that we were saved. And the reason why we're saved when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ for salvation, we are saved. The Bible says that we are born again. Amen. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. You're a new creature in Jesus Christ. And so there should be some new habits that are formed. And those habits that are formed should be one of going out into this world and sharing the gospel with others so that they know that Jesus Christ came and died and was buried and rose again. And if they put their faith and their trust in the gospel, they'll be saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's good preaching, preacher. Keep on preaching it, brother. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So why did Jesus choose to go over to the other side? There was a unique person there that needed him. God had a purpose, and when God has a purpose, he has a plan. And not only that. Because there was a unique person and because there was a purpose and because there was a plan to Jesus, it was a priority. Amen. It was a priority. A lot of Christian people, we don't have our priorities in order. Amen. It's all about us and what we can get and what we can do for ourselves. Right. Everybody with me here? Amen. It was priority number one to Jesus. God had a purpose. God had a plan. And when God has a purpose and God has a plan, it ought to be a priority for you. Amen? It ought to be a priority to you to follow the Lord. Amen? It ought to be your priority. There was a unique person on the other side. God had a purpose. And when God has a purpose, He has a plan. So to Jesus, it was a priority. Jesus Christ ought to be our number one priority above everything else. Amen? Amen. Above Amen. everything that's going on in our life, Jesus Christ and His purpose and His plan ought to be our number one priority. Amen. And so why did Jesus choose to go over to the other side? There was a unique person there that needed Him. And we're going to talk about that unique person here in just a minute. But Jesus went to the other side because of that unique person. And God had a purpose for that unique person on the other side. Not only that, not only was there a purpose, but there was a plan that was going to be put in place for that unique person on the other side. And so Jesus Christ said, this is number one priority. I've already preached and shared the gospel message here. And God's moving and God's blessing. So you know what? Now I'm going to follow God and go over here and try to be a help and a blessing to somebody else. Amen? Amen. That's the way, you know, that's the way we ought to live our lives as Christians. We ought to be every day. Alright? I've helped this person now. Now I need to find somebody else that I can help. Everybody with me here? Amen. Amen. Once you help that person, you know what? Find somebody else. Find somebody else. Find somebody else. You know what? We ought to live our lives for Jesus Christ and living for others. Amen. We ought to constantly be looking for somebody that we can be a help and a blessing to. Well, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. How can I be a help and a blessing to somebody else? And I've got all these things going on. You know what? Greater is He that's within me than He that's in the world. Amen. Amen. Hey, I've got Jesus Christ living on the side, on the inside of me. And if I just put Him first and I try to serve Him and help others, you know what? Jesus Christ will take care of everything else that's going on in my life. That's Amen. Right. And then, so why did Jesus choose to go over to the other side? There was a unique person there. 
God had a purpose. When God has a purpose, He has a plan. And so to Jesus, it was priority. Amen? Why don't you look at verse number 2? Well, we can end right there on verse 1 and go home. Amen. Hush, Dad. I need you to say something. Verse 2. And when He was come out of the ship, immediately there met Him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. There we see the, uh, the unclean spirit. Uh, this, was, this unclean spirit indwelled this man. He lived inside this man. He was indwelled by devils. Uh, we use the word demons a lot. Demons is not found in your King James Bible. Okay? But when somebody says demon, I know what they're talking about. It's the devils. Everybody with me here? Yep. All right. So I see people nudging there and y'all saying, Who's, who, which one of y'all has got the devils in? He's pointing at Angie. Oh, uh, he pointed at Angie too? Oh, let's have prayer right now too. <laughs> this man here, look at verse 2, says, When he was come out of the ship, Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So we see this man uh, that comes out of the tombs and he's indwelled uh, by these devils. Romans chapter number 6 verse 12 says, Let no sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. You know what? There's a lot of people that live their lives and they pretty much they've got devils inside of them. Why? Because they are letting sin take control of their life. Amen. Y'all with me here? See, every person, every person, you have, there's three parts to you. You have your physical body. And then you have your soul that's on the inside of you. And then the Bible talks about the spirit. And that spirit, you're born with that spirit. Well, guess what? That spirit that you're born with, it's empty. Everybody with me here? How many of y'all have heard people talk about when they got saved, it seemed like that uh, there was a void. There was a void in them that was filled. I mean, how many of y'all felt like that when you got saved? You know, that's true. There was a void in you that was filled. The Holy Ghost of God took up residence inside of you. Amen? But this man here didn't have the Holy Ghost of God inside of him. And so guess what? The devil took control of this man. A lot of people are being controlled by the tools of the devil. And they allow themselves to be controlled by the tools of the devil. Ain't it amazing that you can see some of the men in our society, great big, I mean strong men, and they are controlled by a little... 8 ounce or 12 ounce can, whatever it is. I don't know, I don't drink, so I don't know what the ounces are. 8, 12, 16, 24. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Drunk, in the back corner over there. <laughs> but ain't that amazing? They, have, they can't control, they're big. And they can't, they, they can't control themselves. They have to go and get this and turn it up. And they have to go and get more and turn it up. Ain't it amazing that you can see adults... And they're controlled by this little white thing about this long, and it comes to a point on the end. And they can't can't do anything. <coughs> Who wants to live like that? <coughs> Everybody with me here? They're controlled by the <coughs> Amen. That's good preaching. They're controlled by these things. It breaks my heart. I know people that are controlled by that right there. I know somebody right now is probably going to spend probably the biggest part of the rest of their life in jail because they did that and it wasn't in the right mind and it led them to do something else. And now they're behind bars. And chances are, if they're convicted of it, they'll probably not ever get out until they're probably 65, 70 years old. Sad. Do you know why? If it wasn't for that, they never would have thought about what they never would have thought about the sin that they committed because they let that control them. Everybody with me here? Amen. That's good preaching. Amen. That's good preaching right there. Right. Pills. People controlled by pills. I gotta have more, I gotta have more, I gotta have more, I gotta have more. I can't live without them, gotta have more, I gotta have more. And they eat them like Skittles. Amen? Amen. They ain't candy. Amen. That's People right. are controlled by that stuff. By the way, drugs. That's a gateway to open yourself up for the devil to come in and take control. Right. Amen? Yep. That's exactly what that is. Drugs, all the different kinds of drugs that there are, all it is is a gateway for the devil to come in and right. take control of your life. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? This man here was indwelled by these devils. Notice it was plural. He had many of them inside of him. Romans 6.12, I'll read it again. Let no sin... Therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Amen. We ought not have sin in our life. Amen. I know that we live in this flesh. How 
And as long as we live in this flesh, we're going to make mistakes. But we ought not to say, oh, well, I'm in the flesh. It's okay. People make mistakes and say it's okay. No. You know what? When you mess up, there ought to be something on the inside of you. The Holy Ghost of God tugging at your heart and saying, hey, you're not doing right. You need to get right. Hello? If you don't have that tugging at your heart when you sin and you make mistakes, then I would have a heart checkup. Amen. And not like what? She's going to have here in a couple days. Amen. Not that kind of heart checkup. But see if the Lord Jesus Christ really has resonance right. in your Amen. heart, in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 Don't let sin reign in your mortal body. We ought to strive every single day. We're not, nobody here is perfect. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So if there's anybody that says that they're sinless, they're a liar, they just sinned, they've got sin in their life. Amen. Everybody with me here? Amen. But we ought to live every single day we ought to strive to live above sin and reproach. Hey, if you know what your weakness is, stay away from it. Amen? Amen. Hey, if, you're, if your weakness is alcohol, don't go down the beer aisle at the grocery store. Hello? If your weakness is pot, don't go around those that smoke it or sell it. Amen? Amen. Hey, if your weakness is pills, don't go around those that try to sell them. Amen? If your weakness is any other kind of drug, stay away from those that are pushing that. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's good preaching preacher. Amen. 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 This man was, had an unclean spirit. He was indwelled by the devils. Once you look at Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verses 20 through 23. Everybody still with me here this morning? Amen. Amen. And he said, Mark chapter 7, verse 20, and he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. We need to make sure that we don't live a sinful lifestyle. That is something that's sad, sad to say, but that is something that's not really preached from behind pulpits anymore about sin. Hey, we need to live right, make sure we put Jesus Christ first, and we live above sin as best as we can. If you put your faith and your trust in Jesus and keep your eyes focused in on Him, Sin will not reign in your mortal body. Amen. 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 Look at verse number 3. Mark chapter number 5. Verse number 3. It says, Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. So he dwelled among the tombs. This is a picture of spiritual death. You know what? I think there's a lot of Christian people that are dwelling amongst the tombs today. Everybody with me here? Amen. Churches are dwelling amongst the tombs this morning. Churches at once were live and vibrant, moving forward for the Lord, going out knocking on doors and winning the lost and, and lifting up the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Now they're all about money and they're all about, uh, all, about the, uh, all this and that, these functions and that functions and this, that and the other. And they're not going out and winning the lost anymore. You know what? They're dwelling amongst the tombs. They're spiritually dead. They've kicked the Lord Jesus Christ out. The Bible talks about Revelation chapter number 3, verse 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You know what? That doesn't happen. You know, we use that a lot when we're trying to win somebody to the Lord. But you know what? That verse of Scripture there has nothing to do with the lost people. You know what? That has to, has to do with the church. Because Jesus Christ has been kicked out of the church and He's on the other side of the door and He's knocking and saying, Let me back in. Let me have control. Let me move like I used to. And the church shut the door and locked it and deadbolted it and put a chain lock on it so we don't want it no more. There's a lot of Christian people and a lot of churches that are dwelling amongst the tombs. They're spiritually dead. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at verses 3 and 4. It says, Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Here we see super, superhuman strength. That's a sign of devil possession. How many of y'all have seen videos on YouTube and different places of people and people say they're demon possessed or devil possessed? You know, and some people laugh that off. Oh, that's just, they're high on drugs. Guess what? That drug was a gateway to let the devil come in and have control. By the way, stay away from a lot of other things like Ouija boards, tarot cards, your horoscope, and a bunch of garbage. All that is is many tools of the devil to come in and work his way into your life and take control. Amen? Amen. Amen. It says here that no man could tame him. 
He had super, superhuman strength. It was a sign of uh, devil possession. It says no man could tame him. Let me say this. Men will run to everything under the sun to fix their problems and see it fail time and time again. Here this man was possessed with the devil and this is the way the world works. We'll run to everything else but Jesus Christ to look for an answer to help take, and take control of our lives again. How many of y'all have ever felt like that your life was just spinning out of control and you didn't know what to do and everything that you tried failed? I've been there before. Amen. You know what? That's exactly what this is a picture of here. This man was possessed with these devils and nobody knew what to do for him and they kept trying it their way and guess what? It kept failing. Time and time again, he kept breaking the chains and the fetters. Everything that they did to try to tame this man didn't work. Jesus is the only one who can heal man's sin sickness. Amen. See, this world offers so many different things to mankind to heal them of their sin sickness. Well, if you live a good life, you do some good deeds. That'll get you to heaven. You know what? Well, try this religion. We've been talking about a lot of different religions in Sunday school. Try this religion. It'll help you know it's going to make it worse. Well, why don't you just try forgetting everything and, 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 just, and, and just try to focus on yourself? Well, guess what? The problem is you. And if you focus in on what you want, you know what you, what you want? More sin. More things to please this flesh. Amen? <coughs> Jesus Christ is the only answer for the sin sickness in this world and in your life and in my life. Amen? Amen. That's good preaching, preacher. That's right. Once you look at verse number 5. It says, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Crying and cutting himself with stones. That's a sign of devil possession right there. That's a sign of devil possession right there. How many of y'all have heard of people, uh, these... Uh, these people, these blood letters, or they, where they cut themselves, I forget what they call it. What do they call it? Cutters. Uh, cutters, is that one spot? I thought it had another name. It was cutters. How many of y'all have heard of people doing that? Take razor blades and cut themselves? Yeah. Yeah. And they said they're doing that to relieve pain? You know what that is? That's a sign of devil possession. The devil has control of their life. See, that's what this man was doing. He was possessed with these devils. It says he was in the tombs with stones, crying out, cutting himself daily. Non-stop, he's just crying and cutting himself with these stones. That's a sign of devil possession. You know, we got a lot of, especially young people in our society today, they're doing that stuff. They've been doing this stuff for a long time. But you know what that's also a picture of? Someone who is in pain, in pain emotionally and spiritually will harm themselves to try and bring relief or at least refocus their feelings onto something else. That's the reason why, you know what, those that cut themselves, that's no different than somebody turning into a bottle. Everybody with me here? Yep. Somebody that cuts themselves, that's no different than turning to drugs. Somebody that cuts themselves, that's no different than somebody else turning to this world Amen. to seek some relief to the emotional and spiritual pain that they've got in their lives. I'm going to tell you right now, no razor blade is going to bring relief. No razor blade is going to refocus your, refocus your attention on, and get your attention away from what the real problem is. No alcohol, no drug, no sex outside of marriage, no adulterous relationship, none of these things will help you. The only thing that can help you is put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ for everything in your life. Amen? He ought to be number one and we ought to trust Him with everything. Amen. Amen. This man, people were trying everything that they could do and it didn't work. This man was trying everything that he could do for himself and it wasn't working. The only thing that will work is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Right. Look at verses 6 and 7. Everybody still with me here this morning? Amen. 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 Verses 6 and 7. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Even the devils know who Jesus is and they fear Him and worship Him. Amen? Amen. I don't understand these people in the world today that say they hate Jesus and say they'll never worship Him, they'll never bow down to Him. I got news for them. There's coming a day where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall Amen. confess Amen. that He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen? Hey, they may not want to worship Him now, but there's coming a time when they will worship Him. They'll have no choice. Amen. Amen. Even the devils know who Jesus is and fear Him and worship Him. One day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Look at verses 8 and 9. It says, For He said unto him, 
come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. So here we see the devils are commanded by Jesus to come out of the man. I'm glad that Jesus Christ come into my life, amen, and He has control over my life, and the devil can't have control of my life as long as Jesus is number one in my life. Amen? amen. Right. Notice there when Jesus asked Him, He asked Him, so, uh, look at verse number 9, it says, What is thy name? <coughs> and the man responds back, the devils respond back, and they say, Legion, for we are many. Now I've heard preached on this a lot of times, and you'll hear preachers, uh, how many of y'all heard preachers say, well that could be anything from 50 to 500, we don't know exactly what the number is. How many of y'all heard preachers say that before? I've heard that too. You know what? I, I think the answer is right here in this same chapter. Yep. It's right here in this chapter. We would just read. I think that's our problem a lot of times as Christians is we hear a preacher say something and we take his word for it and we leave it alone. Everybody with me here? Everything that I preach, everything that I say, don't take my word for it. You take the word of God and, and research it and read it for yourself and look it up for yourself and see if what I say be true. But I believe the answer is right here. I believe the Bible tells us how many devils he had in him. Verse 9 says, And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now I want you to look at verse 13 to get the answer here. How many devils does this man have in him? I don't know, but I think the Bible gives us a pretty good answer here. Verse 13, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. So there could have been 2,000 or more. At least one per pig that was out there. Amen? So I've heard 50, I've heard 100, I've heard 500. But the Bible says right here there was 2,000, so I think there's probably 2,000. Maybe more, but that's probably 2,000. Alright? So, we see here in verses 8 and 9, many devils were in this man. Maybe around 2,000 or more. Many and great are the sins of man. That's what this represents here for us today. This man was had all these devils in him. You know what? There was a great number of devils that was possessing his life. Most men today, there's a great number of sins that are controlling people's lives. Amen. Amen. Sin is the problem. Everybody with me here this morning? Sin is the problem. And you know what? You don't hear that preached behind pulpits anymore because people don't want to have the toe stepped on and they're afraid that the preacher will call out the specific sin that they've got in their life. I want you to know if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it is sin. The Bible even goes as far as to say this, to him to know what to do good and do what to not, to him it is sin. Amen. Amen. If you know to do right and live right and you choose not to, you've sinned. Amen. 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 Great are the number of sins that, that are in mankind. That's right. verse, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Iniquity, sin, is abounding in our world every single day. Amen. Do we not see it when you watch the news? Amen. Now, it seems like every yeah, single I tell you, it just drives me crazy. But it seems like at least once a month, I get up here and I make reference to some protest and rally and, 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 and riots taking place. That would break our hearts. How many of y'all heard about the riots that took place in St. Louis? Four officers heard. Thirteen people arrested, probably more since then. It's sad. People want to go out, they, they want to go out there and bash out windows and they want to harm cops, they want to harm one another. You know what that is? This world got sin sickness. It's a disease. And it's not being treated. It's spreading. And guess what? If you have a disease, you have an you have HIV disease in you, and you leave it untreated, guess what happens? It spreads. And it spreads so much that it starts taking over what good white blood cells that you have and destroying them to the point where you die. That's what's happening to society today. Sin is a disease. And it's not being treated because preachers are afraid to get behind the pulpit and call out sin for what it is and let people know you need to get rid of that sin out of your life. Amen. And so the disease is spreading. And as the disease spreads, people are dying spiritually. And hell, the Bible says, hath enlarged herself daily. Hell is getting bigger every single day. I may be wrong on this, but this is my, way, my redneck way of thinking, my little pea brain here. <laughs> The last days, it talks about the end times, the last days, it talks about earthquakes in diverse places. And we're, not, we're, not seeing, we're not seeing that, are we? Absolutely we're seeing that. By record, you know what I think that is? I might be wrong on this. 
But you know what I think that is? I think that's hell enlarging herself, making room for more people to burn in hell for eternity. That ought to make us sad, make us sick to our stomachs this morning. To know that the biggest majority of people that walk on this earth will burn in hell. And the reason why they're going to burn in hell is because Christian people have sin sickness in their life and they're not doing anything to live a righteous life and they're not doing anything to help point people to Jesus Christ Amen. to find the cure for the sin sickness that's in this world and in their life. Amen. Many and great are the sins of man. Look at verses 10 through 13. Everybody still with me this morning? Amen. 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 says, And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter uh, into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They uh, were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Why into the swine? Blair asked me this question about, what, two, three weeks ago? Ever since then, I couldn't get it out of my mind because I couldn't give him a good answer. Well, I think, I hope, and pray, I got a good answer for that this morning. Why did Jesus cast them into the swine? They asked Jesus to cast them into the swine. Jesus could have done whatever he wanted to. Mm -hmm. He's God in the flesh. Amen. He could do whatever he wanted to. But I think, and I might be wrong on this, and if anybody else in here you know better than me, correct me afterward. But this is what I think. Why into the swine? Swine were considered uh, considered by the Jews to be unclean beasts. Now keep in mind, we've been talking about sin this whole passage of Scripture. Everybody with me this morning? Yeah, we're going to get into some deep theological stuff here. So get your pen and paper ready, alright? Wine to the swine. Swine were considered by the Jews to be unclean beasts. And so it could have been that the Jewish people there were keeping these unclean beasts and by Old Testament law, they were to stay away from them. You'll find that in Leviticus 11, verses 7 and 8. Matter of fact, we'll turn there. Let's read that. Everybody with me? Amen. Leviticus chapter 7, or excuse me, chapter 11, verses 7 and 8. I'm glad that I'm a Gentile. I live in the age of grace because I ate bacon this morning. Right. <laughs> Amen. Leviticus chapter number 11, verses 7 and 8. And the swine, though, uh, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he uh, cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcasses shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So the Jews were commanded by, by Mosaic law, they couldn't eat them, they couldn't touch them. So why were Jewish people keeping a herd of swine? They were no good to them. They couldn't eat them, they couldn't even touch them. So why did they have it around? You know what I think this is a picture of? Christian people. We're told in God's Word. I've been preaching it all morning here. To stay away from sin. They were told to stay away from swine, but yet they were keeping the swine. A lot of Christian people were told, we're, we're told by God's Word to stay away from sin, but we flirt with it. Do we not? Everybody with me here? Amen. I know what my weakness is and I know what I need to do to stay away from it. But guess what? That old flesh won't stay. So you'll flirt with it. Well, I'm not always around it so it don't have complete control. Yeah, it does because you're thinking about it. Everybody with me here? And so these Jewish people were doing something that was totally against the law of God. And there's a lot of Christian people that are living totally against what Jesus Christ has commanded. And you know what? Jesus cast them into the swine and said, all right, that's what I'll do. He cast them into the swine. And you'll read here, guess what they did? They all ran off the cliff into the water and every one of them drowned. You know what that was? I believe Jesus was kind of sending a warning to the Jewish people there telling them they quit dabbling with sin. I think it was in God's Word for us today. To, be, to remind us, quit dabbling with sin. Amen. Whatever it is that you've got in your life that you, that's messing you up and driving a wedge between you and the Lord, cast it into the sea of forgiveness, never to be remembered again. Get it out of your life. Amen. Draw close to the Lord. Amen. 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 So wine to the swine. Swine were considered by the Jews to be <coughs> unclean beasts. And so it could have been that the Jewish people there were keeping these unclean beasts and by Old Testament law, uh, they were to stay away from them according to Leviticus 11, 7 and 8. Stop keeping company with unclean people and unclean things. Amen. I got in trouble for this a while back and I'll say it again here this morning. 
I posted something on Facebook said, uh, show me who your friends are and I'll show you who you are. Amen? That's a whole lot of truth to that. Amen? Yeah. Godly people should keep godly company. Amen? And I had a lot of people say, well, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. How can we win them to the Lord if we don't hang around them? There's a big difference between witnessing somebody and being friendly with them and hanging out with them. Big difference. Big difference. You hang around somebody that's lost and lives in this world, guess what they're going to do? They're going to drag you down. 99 times out of 100, you're not getting them in the church. They're going to get you into the world. Get you out of church. Amen? We ought to live... A life, the Bible tells us to be separate. Be separate, said the Lord, touch not the unclean thing. Amen. These were unclean beasts. We will not touch sin. We will not have sin in our life. Don't let sin reign in your mortal body. Live a righteous and upright life pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Look at verses 14 through 17. We're almost done here. Then y'all can go eat your fried chicken or Chinese food or whatever it is you want to get. Look at verses 14 through 17. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city. And in the country, and they went out to out to see what it was that was done. I'm going to time out right there. This is not in my notes, but I'm going to hit this one real quick. John talked about it again in Sunday school this morning, and I'm sure maybe some of y'all saw it on Facebook. How many of y'all saw the post that I put up of the picture of our church sign? And there was a death metal band yeah. that happened to be across the street, took a picture of our church sign, put it on their on their Facebook page, and because the sign said, I hate this church. I don't think they were across the street. I think they were in the park. They might have pulled them apart in my garden. They look kind of close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, the sign said, I hate this church. Satan. As if Satan was saying, I hate this church. Mm -hmm. Now, I find this funny. We were talking about, talking about this this morning in the van. find this funny. They posted that back in April. It only had 12 likes. And really, it only had 11 because they liked their own post. <laughs> and it had one comment. And it really wasn't a real comment because they commented on their own post and said, I bet a lot of the folks in that church is on good speaking terms with him. I'm not with Satan. You know what? You know why they said that? Because it's true in a lot of churches. True in a lot of churches. That's the reason why I'm preaching this message here this morning so hard. We need to live above sin. We need to live a life that's pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. So that Satan really does hate this church. Now, I think that's great. I, I, I had no problem with the post. All they did was just further advertise the church and advertise the Lord <laughs> on their own page. <laughs> have at it. I like it. But see here in this passage of Scripture, those that owned the swine saw what happened and what did they do? They started going telling it abroad. Mm -hmm. Now, they were trying to do it to bring reproach against the Lord, but all they was doing was spreading, brought, spreading abroad His fame and what Jesus was doing. Amen? Amen. So let, let the haters hate. And let them talk all they want. Because all, they, yeah, because all it does is just spread the name of Jesus even more. Amen? Amen. Alright, verses 14 through 17. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and, the, and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus to see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. No matter what, the world still rejects Jesus Christ. Amen. Preachers, should I give up? I mean, you tell me I need to be a witness. You tell me I need to share the gospel. You just said that no matter what, the world's still going to reject Jesus. Yeah, the world as a whole. But there's always still that one. There was this unique man that was just like the world. He embodied everything that the world had to offer. But that unique person needed Jesus. Amen. And God had a purpose and a plan. And so Jesus made a priority no matter what. All the people in that area rejected him. But there was one that received. And you see what happened. Jesus Christ made a change on the inside of him. Amen. They found him clothed. He was naked. They found him clothed and sitting and in his right mind. Jesus did that. Jesus is the answer to everything, folks. That's right. Amen. Amen. The world may reject it, but there's still that one that needs Jesus. Amen. You might be able to reach just that one. Amen. Amen. We have verses 19 and 20. How be it Jesus suffered, excuse me, uh, verses, verse 18. And when he was come into the ship, talking about the, the man that had the legions that's now clothed and in his right mind, verse 18. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. 
Once Jesus truly makes a change on the inside, you'll want to stay in the center of His will. Amen? Amen. This man was changed by Jesus Christ and he wanted to be close to Jesus. When Jesus makes a change on the inside of you, You'll want to be around the things of God. You'll want to be around the people of God. You'll want to be involved in the ministries for the, to further the gospel message. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'll tell you, it's a blessing to me to see people get saved and continue to come to the church and get rooted in. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen? That's a blessing. That's what we're seeing take place here in this passage of Scripture. Now look at verses 19 and 20. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. So immediately, this man began to be a witness. He didn't go off to Bible college. He didn't wait till he could memorize 20 verses to go out and be a witness. Immediately, he went out and started witnessing for the Lord. I like what else was in this verse. See, I could say that, and a lot of preachers will preach that, and I'll leave it alone. But notice where he went. Notice where he went. Look at verses 19, 20, or excuse me, verse 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Decapolis. What is Decapolis? It is a group of ten cities. Ten cities. Everybody with me here? A group of ten cities. They were located in the eastern frontier of the Roman Empire and was the center of Greek and Roman culture. Here we see that Jesus comes. I believe that this maniac of Gadara is a Jew. And he sends a message to the Jews by casting the devils into the swine and sending them out to drown in the sea. But then we see here where this man, after his clothing in his right mind, goes into Decapolis. And these are ten cities. And this, in that area, these ten cities are the center of Greek and Roman culture. I want you to look at Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And we're done here. Romans chapter number 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost, right? But He came to who? He came to the Jews. He came to the house of Israel. Here we see He goes, He had a purpose. He goes to this Jewish man and makes a difference on the inside of him. And he tried to warn the other Jews, but they rejected him. So now we see a turn from that. Oh, I like this. Now we see a turn from the Jew, and now this man's going to the, where the Greeks, the Romans and the Greeks are, to the Gentiles. To the Jew first, and then to the Gentiles. Amen? Yeah. Everybody with me here? Yeah. And what did he go with? The Gospel. The death. He was going to talk about what Jesus Christ did for him. You know what we do? We talk about what Jesus did for us. His death, His burial, and His resurrection. And that's what saves. So we see here through this whole thing, it should be a picture of you and I. It should be a picture of what Christ has done for us. We were lost in our sins. And there was nothing that we could do to make a change of that. We could try all we wanted to, but nothing would change that. But then Jesus came by. And we realized who Jesus was. And we fell down at His feet. And we put our faith and our trust in Him. And He made a change in our life. A complete change. And now we ought to go out and be about our Father's business. We ought to desire to be as close to Him as we can. And we ought to go out to every city that we can reach. And share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. With every person we come in contact with. That is our job. Don't let sin reign in your mortal body. Don't let sin have control of your life. Live a life that's pleasing unto the Lord, a righteous and upright life, and go out and be a witness, not just here and there, but everywhere. Amen? Amen. You know, we kind of talk about how that Paul was the first missionary. But I kind of think the maniac of Gadara here might have been the first missionary. Because he goes out to ten different cities, spread abroad what Jesus Christ had done for him, and how Jesus could do the same for them. You know what we need to do? Live a clean life. Live a life pleasing unto the Lord. And be a missionary. Share the gospel everywhere that we go. That Amen. is our job. That is the purpose to the Christian life. Amen. Is spread forth the message, the gospel message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm not looking around here this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Everyone standing to their feet. Bow every eye closed. Everyone stand to your feet.
everybody around. Was there just <coughs> nobody looking around here this morning? This altar's open. I want to encourage you, if you're here this morning and you're struggling with something in your life, quit trying on your own. Give it to the Lord. Quit trying to take care of the situation yourself because you'll make a mess of it. Give it to the Lord. Maybe you're here this morning and you're struggling with a, a specific sin in your life. Quit trying to take care of it on your own because you will fail. And you will fall short. Give it to the Lord. Let the Lord have control of your life. So Lord, here am I. Take my life. Mold me, shape me, make me into what you'd have me to be. Maybe you're here this morning and you just want to thank the Lord for what He's done for you. You know what I think we ought to do that? I think we ought to spend time thanking the Lord for what He's done for us. Because I guarantee you, every one of us in here this morning that's saved and know Christ our Savior, every one of us have fallen short time and time again. And Jesus Christ, I'm so glad that His mercy and His grace, I'm glad for that. I'm glad that the Lord is long-suffering towards us. Amen? I'm glad that the Lord's still there and He says, I love you and I want to use you. I want to say here this morning, nobody here this morning is damaged goods. Jesus still can use you. Preacher, you don't know what I've done in my life. Preacher, you don't know the reputation that I've got. That's all right. It don't matter. Jesus does. And Jesus can take your life and make a complete change and use you for His honor and for His glory. See, this man here in Scripture had a reputation. He lived in the mountains and in the tombs. Nobody wanted to be around him. But guess what? When he let Jesus make a change in his life, news spread real quick that there was something different about this man. Let me tell you here this morning, there can be something different about you. It don't matter your reputation. It doesn't matter what people think about you. Jesus loves you. And He cares about you. And He wants to make a difference in your life. Will you let Him here this morning? Will you let God have control? Will you let go and let God be God in your life here this morning? Maybe you're here this morning and you realize that you need to be a witness for the Lord. That you need to be sharing the Gospel more. Passing out Gospel tracts. And inviting friends. Inviting family. Sharing the Gospel with everybody you come in contact with. And you're not. I want you to know this message was for you this morning too. To be a wake-up call that now is the time to serve Him. Now is the time to put Christ number one in your life. Don't wait for tomorrow. Because tomorrow may not come. This altar's over here this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There's nobody looking around here today. I want to ask you a question. I want you to be honest with yourself and honest with the Lord. If you were to die today and you're not sure that you'd go to heaven, I want you to slip up your hand. I just want to pray for you. Is there anybody like here this morning that said, Preacher, that's me? I see those hands. Anybody else said, Preacher, that's me? I'm not sure that I'm saved on my way to heaven. If I were to die today, I'm not sure. This altar's open. Why don't you come? Why don't you come and put your faith and your trust in Jesus for salvation? Why wait for tomorrow what needs to be done today? You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised the very next breath that you take. I saw those hands. Why don't you come? This altar's open here this morning. Is there anybody else here this morning? Preacher, pray for me. I've got some battles and some struggles and things I'm going through in my life. And I need some guidance from the Lord. Won't you slip up your hand? I just want to pray for you. See those hands. Anybody else say, Preacher, that's me. I'm, I'm just going through a hard time. I need some guidance from the Lord. Will you pray for me? Is there anybody else like here this morning say, Preacher, that's me. I see that hand. I see that hand. I want you to know this. God can do anything. Why don't you come and just kneel down here, humble yourself before the Lord. Say, Lord, I give it all to you. Lord, I give it to you. Take control. Move in my life, God. Do for me the things that I cannot do for myself. That's right. This altar's open. Why don't you come? I love this story here in God's Word. Because you think about, here you see the worst of the worst. This man here probably is, his story here is probably worse than anything that any of us in here have ever gone through or ever lived. And see what Jesus did for him? Made an immediate change in his life. Jesus can do that for you. He can, whatever your situation is, whatever the struggle is, you trust Christ with it, He can make an immediate change if you fully trust Him. The reason why a lot of Christian people don't see a change in their situation is because they say, I give it to you, Lord, but they still hold on to it and they won't let go. Give it to the Lord. Let go of it. And God will take control. He will fix it. He will take care of it. And He will also use it for His glory. But you got to let Him. 
you've got to let Him. I thank God for His Word. I thank God for how He speaks to us through His Word. I'm so glad that the Lord allowed this story to be here in the Bible because there's so much information packed into this that can help each and every one of us. We just got to trust the Lord and take God's Word and put it into action in our lives. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, God, I thank You for this day. Lord, I thank You for Your love, Your mercy, Your grace. Lord, I thank You for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank You for the day that You saved me and washed my sins away and wrote my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord, I thank You, Lord, for how You speak to us through Your Word. God, I thank You, Lord, that we can freely read Your Word any time that we want to. And God, I thank You, Lord, for the time that we have that we can study Your Word and apply it to our lives and draw closer to You. And God, I thank You, Lord, for the things that You've done for me in my personal life. And God, I thank You for being so good to me and loving me and my family and caring for us and taking care of us. God, I thank You for what You're doing here with Glory Bound Baptist Church. And God, how You're using us for Your honor and for Your glory. God, thank You for all Your many blessings. Thank You, Lord, for all that You've done for us. Lord, may we always put our faith and our trust in You. May we always strive to live a life pleasing unto You. God, I pray that You use us, continue to use us for Your honor and for Your glory to be a witness to this lost and dying world to share the Gospel message that Jesus came and died and was buried and rose again. And we trust in the Gospel for salvation. Help us, Lord, to spread the Gospel everywhere that we go. Lord, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ, the greatest name, the name above all names, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Preacher. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say, I don't mean to embarrass him, but a grin on my heart. And my son, I want to thank God that he's here Amen. Amen. with your last Sunday. Amen. But God answers prayer. Amen. He sure does. Amen. 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 Anybody else here this morning? I like stuff like this. Anybody else here this morning? Right. Yes, sir. Preacher, I just want to thank God real quick for uh, the struggles that we have. We have better, better than most in our house, but uh, man, I'm thankful for the struggles because it helps us to know we're in the will of God and it helps us to lean on God. And I, I don't know what what we do without it. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm really thankful for all that uh, all that we've been through, all we continue to go through, and that we can lean on <coughs> on the awesome God. Amen. 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 Anybody else here this morning? If not, we'll pray and we'll be dismissed. And uh, I'm going to ask the player, will you dismiss us in prayer, please? Lord, thank you for the blessings you give us. Lord, thank you for our gathering today. Lord, thank you for the service and the message this morning. Thank you for the singing. Lord, thank you for our children coming up and spreading us good cheer this morning. Lord, thank you for all of us being here together today. Lord, help us accomplish all the tasks that are for us and help us have a wonderful day. I worship you again tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, 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 oh,